Okay. So this is really a, a meant meant to just be an orient an introduction. Uh, what is SharePoint uh, for business, and uh, what are some use case scenarios associated with SharePoint? And uh, so just you know overview, quick overview. Uh, there is a um, you know question about getting started, and their promised benefits would be store, s sync, and share your content. Keep the the team on the same page. Track. Uh, and you know, stay on track for a workflow and processes. Um, finding the right people uh, would be a use case scenario, uh, as well as find information that you need and making good decisions. Those are the high level kind of benefits that they're that they're proposing with uh, getting things done. Uh, another use case would be, and so this. So another use case would be in, in the Department of HR and Internal Communications, which you're well aware of. Uh, keeping everyone informed, onboarding employees would be the two use cases that they're presenting there. Um, oops, I pressed the wrong button there. Let me go back. Uh, here we go. All right, so I actually I launched into it. Here we go. The way to navigate through this is not a conventional navigation, very much like SharePoint, not a, not a conventional navigation. So the other thing is um, R&D production operations, sharing the knowledge, boosting business processes are the proposed benefits there. Sales and marketing would be making your customers and partners happy, engaging your audience online, and aligning your teams uh, with respect to sales and marketing. Finance and accounting is crunching numbers. And then the other department would be legal, helping meet compliance needs within the legal department. And finally, we have the, the IT department themselves providing the right support, empowering people to stay in control of their workspace or the data in their workspace. And so I thought that the way that that's organized is pretty good. Um, so it's go, and then looking at the top menu, getting started, store sync, store sync and share your your documents, your content. There is a guide for that. Okay, so I have all these guides already downloaded and presented on the links with the workshop that we had done. So this represents one of the one of the guides with respect to storing and syncing and sharing your content. So how does, you know, how does SharePoint work that way for those functions? Um, what, you know, so this is a, this is a worksheet they, they've got synchronizing your data using the, the, um, the uh, file explorer on your desktop or your laptop to actually manage the files in your SharePoint with your file store. And then, um, uh, so you know, syncing, sharing it, so 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 you can share it with uh, persons that you know, like and trust on your team, whatever. the The concept of having a controlled access and then being able to determine whether they can edit it or only if they can view it, um, how that's done, where that's done in SharePoint. Uh, then choosing optionally whether or not they have to sign in. And if they're on the approved list to gain to gain access to those documents, um, and then being able to later you you click on you right click on this ellipsis these three ellipses, in order to see who in the past you shared this with, <laughs> and how what are their permissions? Can they edit it or can they just view it? So that's always something you you you, you would have access to that information. Um, and then uh, let's see here, content design. Uh, this is collaboration, right? So two editors can work on a section of a document. They would get a little warning notice. So this this little break bracket on the side in the index would pop up that tells everyone who, or if there's just two people working on this, editing a Word document here. Um, this this segment, this goals section of the document is locked because Ali Bellu is working on it. Even though this is Garth. I don't know if you can see my my uh, tiny little thing, but that's Garth over here. He's he's opening and reviewing and possibly editing this Word document within SharePoint. However, he can't go into this paragraph, which is titled goals, 
because Allie has locked it and she's doing editing on that paragraph. So that's how Word would be rendered in SharePoint and the multiple editors simultaneously done with this with this product. Okay. Cool. So I think that goes further than what uh, you might be familiar with from using SharePoint in the past. Um, editing a document simultaneously. Okay, so here's more details. And then here's another thing right here. This so Allie in the in in the in the column you can see Allie's on, working on that and her icon is yellow. That's the presence icon within Office 365. But if I wanted to, to do initiate a phone call within the document, I could do that. Uh, she's in, you know, I can do a text, I am text message here. I could do a phone call. I could do a video a web, a web, web call or just send an email message about anything I want to communicate with Allie on. Uh, so this talks about the lockdown of the paragraphs. Then, then when you open up the document later, it tells you that updates are available. Okay, so if someone else was editing a, a document that you had and you you didn't know that, you 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 would just look here and you would see, okay, someone else made some updates on this document. Okay, and it highlights it. So and then, it, yep, highlights it in green. These are the changes that person made. And so then you would be able to keep track of those changes. And then now looking, now we're looking at the... Uh, uh, the, the ribbon within the browser, uh, this is OneDrive, it shows OneDrive here, and the ribbon shows the, li the, the library tab and the version. So this would be a way to, to check out what was edited on what, at what version level. Okay, and you can create major and minor draft versions, 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 2.0. Okay, so were the edits that they made or that you both made big edits or minor edits, right? So is it a you know major or minor version uh, associated with those updates? And so, and then <clears throat> if you wanted to go in, you go back to the ellipsis on the file on the file uh, folder, and you can go to version history, and then you can see all the the edits that were done, the date, the timestamps, the version numbers, the editor. So Ali and Garth Fort, Garth Fort were working on this, and then Ann Wallace did did one. So you can see, you can go back to any of those versions. It's all, it's all tracked and uh, time stamped. Cool. And so in the past, this whole process was too obtuse for most people. <laughs> but I, I'm showing you because uh, you you of all people would probably be more adept at this editing and versioning process and understand it and, and be able to lead someone else if you were collaborating with them uh, using a tool like this. So that's why I, I think it's great to have you and to cover this with you because, um, you know, who, who else? I, mean, I used to use versioning software, so this is, yep. this is good. Very cool. When I use PowerPoint, I don't believe it had the capability of two users or more in the same document at the same time. Yeah, so PowerPoint. Check out the entire document and then check it back in before others can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now they're talking about the um, the Windows Phone at the end there. So I'm going to go back one. So that's that's the e that's the guide. That's the guide on sync, store, and share information. The discovery guide. Uh, and I got that all that information from that right there where it says get the guide okay and so this is all in the chapter getting started store sync share your content keep everyone on the same page okay there's the there's a guide for that stay on track and deliver on time and there's a guide for that <clears throat> and then there's also some you know videos right so uh, if you want to have a project and you're looking at a timeline, you want to break it down in steps. This is this is uh, what you can do with SharePoint, um, and there's the guide for it. Let's let's open that up for a second and see how that. And there's the videos. There's some videos on it, right? Take your project to the next la level. Stay up. Stay on top of things by keeping an eye on your personal and assigned tasks in a single to-do list. Um, so I think um, the world, I would just, as, a, as a, a general concept, 
So this is this is looking at um, adding a adding the timeline to your site. Okay, so these are these are like uh, SharePoint parts. So if you're doing an intranet and you want to put a timeline on your site, here's here are some like out of the box add-ons. And we're going to do a marketing campaign, and here's the timeline and the steps, and who owns the who owns the uh, each part of that timeline, the tasks, right? So it's kind of like a I'm not going to say a project management thing, but a project management thing. It's better than a and and here's an Excel spreadsheet, which is re-rendered within the context of this SharePoint timeline. So then you can uh, indent. I guess there's you know the ribbon has got some additional tasks and so on, uh, which allow you to manipulate those projects. I think the capabilities of this are not exactly the same as tw SharePoint 2010. What, uh, what we're looking at here is SharePoint, 3, SharePoint 2013 or Office 365 version of SharePoint. In comparison to SharePoint 2010, it, it's a little different. So um, I think the only similarity would be that with, um, like here's a, a Gantt chart here. The only similarities would be that the the naming convention is okay. It's called SharePoint, but I think that the the um, and the capabilities are mostly the same. But the back architecture of the system itself on the back end is different. In other words, if someone, a business or customer, already has SharePoint 2010, they're not going to just be able to copy and paste and move everything over into SharePoint Cloud, if that makes any sense. Here we're looking at uh, the timeline rendered in with um, some graphics, right? And looking at dependencies of the project. This goes much in much more, do okay, and here we're save as, uh, sync, sync with SharePoint, uh, OneDrive computer, at, where are you gonna store these files? And um, what does it look like when you synchronize it? Um, so, so I've shown two workbooks uh, this the one I'm showing you now is this one, Stay on Track and Deliver on Time. Then there's one called Find the Right People, uh, which, you know, this, uh, uh, I think this involves having the people on, on the, in the team, um, their profiles set up or their, or their team sites set up. Um, let's look at that for a moment. Yeah, these they are community. They have to be on the, um, on the local area network? Or within the same um, domain company. Yep. They, they, this would be for a use case scenario where everyone has this has been uh, uh, they're admitted to the domain. So it would be managed by Active Directory or or uh, someone with a uh, you know a, a uh, it doesn't have to be everyone with the same email address. You can have different email addresses, but they have to be admitted to the domain. So conceivably. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's going to be an administrator for this. Principally, there are three roles uh, when it comes to SharePoint. Um, and I think in the context of this, it would be a good way to show. So an example would be like right now we're looking at these find the right people. Here's find what you need. This is searching through SharePoint, <laughs> which is always an, a point of uh, challenge for, for people who have SharePoint. Finding stuff that they need on SharePoint is a, is a is a challenge. So they don't a lot of consequently a lot of the benefit gets lost on the organization. Um, and then analytics, right, or business intelligence, or dashboards, what they call making informed decisions. Can those can those things be done with SharePoint? How does that look? And so here are some examples in this guide on um, those analytics. Right, so here, here's um, uh, this would be Excel. Okay, so business intelligence demo file. They're going. They're connecting this uh, to this workbook connections, and, and and they're getting some data. And now they're going to manage the data with Power Pivot, which is a, a, an enhanced capability of Excel. And for example, Power Pivot, they could have a million rows instead of a lower number. Um, and they could bring in data from different data stores. Uh, yeah, pivot table. 
yeah this is this this is pulling data in right so so related data so there's going to be some kind of analysis and here's a diagram view of the tables for the database and then this is um, you know how do you want to re-render that and um, being able to to pull data in with formulas conditional formulas aggregating those and then adding some some KPIs and then putting it into power view reports right so uh, reporting um, with those various uh, tables or it's like a pivot chart there call it executive dashboard um, this was something we could not really show when we were together at the workshop in Walnut Creek at the library because we didn't have internet. The, it was really, but you can see this executive dashboard has a map of the world and there's some dots on it. And this all was an aggregated set of data from different uh, databases uh, aggregated into power, uh, the, uh, the power view. And uh, here's some graphics that they've, they've added in the, uh, and these are dynamic too. There's a little, see that little triangle button circled there. You could roll that through in the, in, in the, the actual uh, uh, images in the diagram would change shape and, and size and, and location depending on the numbers in the, in the chart. So uh, it's a lot. There's, it's way more than what it did in the olden days. And it's integrated with Excel and Power View and Power Pivot and uh, uh, SharePoint. It's really, uh, those are re-rendered through a browser. So participants wouldn't necessarily need to have a Windows machine or even an Internet Explorer browser to capture the benefits of that technology in those dashboards. Here's some use case scenarios in human resources and in internal communications. Uh, and a, a video for it. And um, let's just go through the next one. Onboarding new employees. This is probably the, one of the most common use cases for SharePoint. You know, give, uh, employee, give the employee access to the network, give them their, their laptop, give, uh, give them onboard uh, their introductory or orientation training, and, you know, set them up through a, a website. And so these are uh, through the, through the, employee intranet. Uh, these are use case uh, videos for onboarding employees with HR. Uh, and then moving on to the next one would be research and de development. And they divide that into sharing your knowledge. There's a guide for that one on R&D and some videos. And then uh, boosting your business as the next section uh, with, within the context of research development and manufacturing production, right? So here's some uh, flow charts and streamline some processes. I think some of these, um, uh, these this is all done in SharePoint on other Office apps. Uh, moving to the next one, we've got uh, sales and marketing uh, with the goal to keep make make customers and partners happy. I think there's more to sales and marketing than that, but uh, like getting new customers. <laughs> but uh, here's some videos on sh how SharePoint can serve towards that end. Organizing publishing content within a a custom knowledge management portal, discovering how SharePoint can build uh, uh, dynamic public-facing websites. So here's a public web. Here's a SharePoint public site. Um, here's a uh, SharePoint uh, organized published content within SharePoint with a custom knowledge management portal. So this could be like uh, you know a knowledge center. This could be uh, any department that wants to educate the rest of the employees would would be able to use that internet feature and then um, then there's also the the team site level sharing documents with partners and customers at the site level so there's uh, there's one site there's like a department and there's uh, and these are these are organized that way so HR R&D sales and marketing finance and accounting and so on uh, the typical adoption challenges for companies that have this platform revolve around three roles. One is the user uh, or the employee. One would be the site administrator, and one would be the collection of sites administrator. And um, each one of those kind of owns a different set of responsibilities. Um, 
and that's you know training at all those three levels or distinct levels represents the opportunity as well um, so here's a pivot table in Excel example on the on the numbers just going back to the numbers again uh, here's another one working together with coworkers on the same spreadsheet at the same time with Excel online co-authoring now, I've got a demo where I did that with Ignacio and put it on a video, and that's part of my video collection on, on YouTube, that that exact same thing. And I did it with an iPad and, uh, you know, an IE browser and a Chrome browser and an, an Android smartphone, uh, looking at that. Transform your data into compelling 3D visualizations with Power Map. This was what we uh, Roger and I tried to demonstrate, uh, but no internet access so we couldn't use that demo script but it's there uh, then okay here's legal help meet compliance needs so this is mostly around e-discovery retention and archive and we actually Ignacio and I did a demo of e-discovery uh, the legal center uh, in the workshop um, so searching a you know a phrase through and this uh, encompasses all the libraries in the in the uh, collection uh, for a company so uh, they can search the PST files in the Outlook uh, the, the archived email as well as archive uh, unstructured documents like Word Docs and PowerPoint this goes into information technology the IT department how can they support their customers using SharePoint right uh, and the, the use cases okay assign ticket requests so that means um, you know trouble tickets uh, service requests password lockouts malware on the computer all the kind of stuff that the IT guys help uh, would would help people with um, tickets open trouble tickets using SharePoint as the platform for that uh, here's surveys gathering information from employees doing surveys um, Here's get status. Okay, so this is using a Visio, which is another office app for diagramming networks and visualizations. So uh, I guess that. So I, the end result is, if you know some use cases from SharePoint, this site can give you a pretty concise and comprehensive overview of examples of how SharePoint is being used, how it's been used in the past, what potential use cases might exist for prospective customers. Thanks for joining.